Welcome to all who have gathered here today to worship as we record the service to be broadcast on Facebook and YouTube. And welcome to all who will worship with us uh, later as we celebrate this second Sunday of Easter. We begin with a few prayer requests. Uh, Karen Brinkman is in the hospital right now. Um, the lung cancer has spread to the other lung. They're hoping to get her out to uh, Monday, but uh, then they'll uh, begin an aggressive round of chemo. So please keep the Brinkmans in your prayers. Also, uh, Jamie Hull, uh, who is cancer Rick Zimmerman, um, is having open heart surgery in Barnes on Monday. So keep that family in your prayer. And Sherry Zimmerman's sister, Joyce, don't know her last name, um, has been struggling with cancer. She's had a relapse of it, and she has been sent home. There's no more they can do for her. So please keep those families in your prayers. Are there any other joys or concerns to share? If not, I invite you to stand as able for the brief order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and forgive us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
us pray. Eternal and almighty God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you, receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of his word. Good afternoon. The first reading is from Acts chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man, handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, but he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised us up, and all that of and all and that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm 16. I'll read the light print and the congregation please follow in the dark. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is in the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries and kings bless the land. Indeed, I have rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have said the Lord always for me, because I have my right hand. I shall not shake. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The second reading is from the first chapter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be re revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now, for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of our souls. The word of the Lord.
Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Lord has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands, and thrust my finger in that mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Jesus answered, Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Grace to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. And I invite the little ones to come up or come closer. I have brought with me today something that I'm not real crazy about, but something that we have been asked to use. I can't breathe. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, it's a face mask, and we have been asked to use them when we go out in public so that they will help keep us safe. Now, they may look a little silly and they may be a little hard to breathe through, but they keep us from catching other people's germs, like if someone coughs right near us or someone sneezes right near us. It helps us to protect us. Now, I've seen a lot of people who haven't had on face masks when they go out. Maybe they think they don't need that, but I kind of think that probably we do need them. We need them to protect ourselves because even though God protects us, that doesn't mean try. For example, your mother says don't ride your bicycle in the street. You don't ride your bicycle in the street so you don't get run over. Well, this is kind of a safety precaution. This helps us so that we don't get other people's germs and we don't get sick. So I think these are a good idea. And of course, as I said, God protects us as well. He helps us, but he sends people who give us or help us with things like this to protect us. What are some other things that we use to protect us? Well, when you ride your bike, you probably have a helmet. You may have elbow pads and knee pads. When you play sports, you have protective gear. These things keep us safe. So this week, I want you to think about how God sends people or, send, or helps people make things that keep us safe. And thank God for all the things that he has given us that help us to remain healthy. Okay? Let's pray. Dear God, Dear God we thank you for keeping us safe. We thank you for all the things that help keep us safe. Face masks and helmets. Protective gear at sports. 
and lots of, other lots of other things. We thank you for loving us, thank you for loving us. enough to send us these things. Help us to stay safe in you today and every day. Amen. Have you ever been afraid? I don't mean momentarily afraid. A spider crawls up beside you or a snake comes from out of nowhere. I don't mean those momentary times when we're afraid and we scream and yell. I mean those times when we are terrified of something, of a situation, of something we cannot control. The disciples we find today even though they had heard that Jesus was alive, are locked away in a room. These disciples were afraid that the Jews would come and do to him them what they had done to Jesus. They had crucified Jesus, so I'm sure the thought in their mind was, which one of us is next? Peter probably is the one who's most fearful, since he was close enough that they kept saying, we know you're one of his followers. So they're scared. They're frightened. They're locked away in the room, waiting, wondering. They're afraid who, of the next person who will knock at their door. Jesus comes among them, flesh and bone. He comes among them even though the door is locked, and he offers them peace. Now, at first they're hesitant because until he shows them his wounds, he shows them his hands. He shows them his side. And then they realize that this is Jesus among them. And they're excited. They're happy. But again, he tells them, peace be with you. That kind of peace that comes and helps calm our souls. That helps us quit worrying about the things we cannot control. Now I want you to note that in... John's Gospel, as Jesus is talking to these disciples, He breathes into them the Holy Spirit. He empowers each of them personally. And guess what? The next week, they're right back in that room. Even though they had been empowered with the Holy Spirit, Jesus has said, just as God has sent me, I'm sending you out. They were back in that room. And the doors were locked and they're scared. Now, the week before, Thomas had not been with them. We called Thomas Doubting Thomas because he didn't believe his brothers. His brothers. He didn't believe the other disciples. But I think Thomas gets a pretty bum rap here because the rest of them didn't believe either. Thomas is just clear about what he needs. He says, I need to see. I need to be able to, to literally thrust my finger into those wounds, to reach out and thrust my hand in his side. I need to be able to touch, to feel, to see. And as he's sitting there with the disciples this time, a week later, Jesus again comes and offers them peace. And then he says to Thomas, Come and see my wounds. Come and stick your hand in my fingers your finger in my hands. Come and throw your hand into my side. And he doesn't need that. Immediately he says, My Lord and my God. And Jesus says, You believe because you've seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. He tells him to stop not believing. He doesn't just say believe. He says stop not believing. Stop doubting. Stop worrying. Stop all the things that you're doing and believe. Sometimes that's hard for us. We have had those times when fear has consumed us. It might have been something that came along unexpectedly. We become afraid. We draw into ourselves. We lock ourselves figuratively into that room because we're afraid of what's coming next. 
We hide, trying to block out the things that scare us. But the truth of it is, we can't lock ourselves away. Life goes on, and we need to go on as well. We need to believe. So what is it that Christ is calling us to believe in? He's calling us to believe in God. Believe in God. Believe in Jesus, that Jesus lived, died, and was raised to new life. Believe that God forgives us of our sins through Christ's death. Believe that Jesus has prepared a place for us in God's family. And today that we are God's children. He calls us to believe in God's Word, those scriptures that we read, that we study, that we hear. He asks us to believe that when we come to Him in prayer, that He not only hears us, but that He answers our prayers. That God loves it when we come and talk to Him. He asks us to believe that through the Holy Spirit, we are empowered to do the things that He calls us to do. Even in times of fear, in times of worry, He asks us to continue on, to keep going, knowing that He has brought us His peace. A kind of peace that the world can't not, cannot give. For a moment, I want you to think about the ways that God the ways that Christ, the Holy Spirit, has brought you out of those times that you were worried, that you were afraid. I think most often of people uh, who have experienced a death, especially if it's a spouse that they've been with for a long time. Yes, most people say, what am I going to do now? But I've had some women look at me and say, literally mean it when they said, what am I going to do now? because they could not imagine a life without their spouse. For them, their life was fearful. It was hard. There's been other times when it may have been an illness that hit us. It may have been an illness that hit one of our family members. It may have been an economic downturn. We've gone from you know, all the news about the COVID virus and everything, too. I noticed I turned my TV on this morning, and it says the financial situation, the, you know, the stock market has taken its biggest hit in history, and I'm going, really? We get, we're flattening the curve. We get the good news, and here comes the bad. And now if you listen to all that, you could lock yourself in your room and be a hermit for the next whatever. And I'm sure some people want to be. Life continues to go on, and as my grandmother would say, and probably yours too, this too shall pass. We know this because God has been faithful to us. God has helped us through the times when we were worried, when we were afraid. For some of this congregation, that may have been through a war. It may have been through a financial crisis. It may have been through a time when there was a shortage of things. I can remember my mother saying we need to buy sugar because it's going to go up. We need to buy this because there's going to be a shortage of it. And I probably shouldn't tell on her, but for some reason she had it in her head those last couple of years that there was going to be a shortage of cotton underwear. <laughs> of course, my dad said, I don't know what she's going to do with all those things. She can't wear it but more than a time. Do we ever do things like that? We get worried. We get scared. And yet God has brought us this far. I think of times in my life that were worrisome, that I was scared. I can think of times in my life when I went to bed at night crying, worrying how I was going to take care of me and three kids. Only to go to the mailbox the next day and there would be a letter of encouragement or there would be something in my mailbox and I walked away from the mailbox going, okay, I got it, I got it. And I was fine until the next crisis came along. Well, Jesus says, stop, not believe. And believe. So today I want you to think for a moment, what have you seen? What have you seen that's good news? 
What are people doing that you can share with other people? How is the Spirit living and moving among us today? Well, of course, if you watched the news last night or the night before, I don't remember, it was about the court given to the food banks. How many of you saw that? That's good news. The places that are saying the curves are flattening. That's good news. The people who are talking about the people who have recovered from this virus. The things that are happening. I actually found toilet paper in the store the other day. Not that one fly stuff that I'm not sure what that's supposed to be, but actually found toilet paper. Things are moving. Things are changing. There are things that are happening that's good news. Where have you heard good news this week? Where have you seen God living and moving among the people? There's lots of ways. I'm sure you can find ways that people have been helping others. Organizations doing things to help others. God living and this week and the weeks that are coming and the weeks that have been past us are not times to hide. Now, I'm not saying go out and do things that are stupid. You know, let's not gather and have a party. Although, I'd love to see all of you again. Let's not gather and have a party. Let's, you know, be reasonable about this. You know, wear our masks. Just have to remember to breathe while I'm wearing it. Wear our masks. Do things but get out and do something. Don't lock ourselves figuratively in our rooms. You can do things without leaving your house. You can do things, you know, to people in your neighborhood. I had a moment of tears last Sunday morning. I'm in the house, and my doorbell rings, and I get two kids standing at my door, they brought me a pint-sized Easter basket. Now, who would have thought a pint-sized Easter basket would bring tears? But it did. <clears throat> they brought me a, a pint-sized Easter basket and a red egg. So they listened to the service. It, it, it brought me to tears. And about, oh, half an hour later when I got through crying, the doorbell rang again and somebody brought me breakfast. So believe me when I tell you that I know God is at work. That I know God is moving in our community. That I know that we will get through this. It's not a time to hide, but a time to share God's love. Something a little more funny about it was Sunday afternoon I get a text from my daughter. She has tagged me on Facebook. I'm not a big Facebook fan. I, I'll admit, I'm not. So I go see what my sister, my, what my daughter's been up to. And she sends me this picture and it says, Lutherans worshiping. I'm like, I like that picture. It was a picture of a family sitting in front of the TV. God's moving. God's helping us. God's helping us not to hide. So I encourage you this week to think about the ways that God calls us to go out into the world. That God calls us to share the good news. That God says, peace be with you. Just as God sent me, I'm sending you. I want you to think of the ways that you can make a difference. We don't need to be locked away. This morning, God is with us. I invite you to move beyond the fear, the doubts, and share God's love and peace with others. Because Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Let us go and share that good news.
you to stand as able as we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, and of course, to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, who is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and in all places, praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Open the doors we close, O God, when we fear those who worship in different ways. Guide us to unity and harmony so that we may come to respect and cherish our commonalities. Lord, in your mercy. Yes, sir. Open our paths, O oh God. Open the paths that we ignore, O oh God, when we prioritize financial gain and convenience over listening to the groaning of the earth. Inspire all who care for the world that you have made so that living things may thrive. Lord, in your mercy. Yes, Open the rooms we lock, O oh God, that we will live, those who live without a homeland or a place of safety. We pray that generous nations offer refuge and peace to all. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Open the hearts we close, O God, to the cries of those in pain. We pray for those isolated physically and emotionally through incarceration, addiction, mental illness, chronic suffering, grief, through the shelter-in-place orders, for all those who are in need. We pray especially for Karen and Jamie and Joyce. Lord, in your mercy, yes. open our ways of love, O oh God, in the pursuit of peace throughout the world. Bless the efforts of missionaries, professional, health care professionals, activists for women and children, for relief workers, especially those who find themselves in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, yes. open the way to eternal life, O oh God, as we remember those who have died in faith. Free us from the fear of death that we embrace the quick peace that you have promised. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. You. you may be seated. Now is the time in our service that we would take up the offering. Now, Thank you for those who have sent offerings uh, so that we can continue the ministry of the church. And I invite you to join with me in prayer. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you have made them in abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table of service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. You may stand. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. may be seated for the announcements. Uh, anniversaries for the month of April. On the 9th was Mark and Sherry Shurfee. The 16th was Gerald and Ruth Jansen. Also on the 16th was Troy and Lindsay Wishkirken. Coming up on the 24th are Pat and Ira Cackley and the 26th Eric, Eric and Tracy Freeze. Our birthdays for April include Don Hummer on the 2nd, Letha Tucker on the 2nd, Lauren Oldenburg on the 6th, uh, Kale Cranberg on the 9th, Peyton McKittrick on the 12th, Nicole Dittmer on the 13th, Olivia Freeze is coming up on the 29th, along with, this is Robert Heyer, I'm thinking this one's Junior. You think it is, Bob? Okay. It says Robert Hyer. So 23rd. It's one of them. Anyway, Aaron and Aiden Johnson have a birthday on the 23rd as well, along with David Sherfy. Braylon Lincoln is on the 27th. And Aubrey Gunth Gunther, I don't know who that is, hmm, is April 30th. <laughs> so we, uh, if you get a chance to tell them happy anniversary or happy birthday, that would probably be nice. We'll have to sing to everybody when they get back here, but uh, for right now. The other announcements are in your bulletin. Um, you can read them for yourselves. I don't think I need to go through them. Are there any other announcements for the good of the congregation? I'm glad. I, I'm hearing a lot of positive feedback about people enjoying the service and, again, th th worshiping with their families. Um, 
being able to, to, to being glad they're able to do this. Um, and so I'm glad you come and help me record so that help get this recorded so that other people can worship with us as we look forward to that day when we can worship together again. Any other announcements? Seeing none, go in peace, share the good news.